I've touched many neighboring generations, but I've purposely avoided ThinkPads from 2013. Fast forward to today, and I'm excited to restore and upgrade one for myself, and I couldn't have been more excited about it. The ThinkPad T440P is very popular among enthusiasts, but I've stayed away from it for a couple of reasons. The first is the cursed trackpad, or as they call it, the clunk pad. And then everything that it had to offer was already covered by one or more ThinkPads in my fleet. I had already covered pretty much all the neighboring generations as well. The oldest that I've gone to in that era of T-Series ThinkPads was the T420 and my favorite design, the T420S. Then there's this T430 that I'll probably talk about in a future video, and the W530 that I restored, beefed up, but could not utilize within my fleet, given the presence of the T15G Gen 2. I also tried a couple of T450 examples that I did not enjoy. I had a T460 at work during my pre-ThinkPad years, and a T460S that I found to be a perfect travel ThinkPad, but passed it on to its new owner. I also got to try several T470 examples that were pretty good, though I could never try a T470S. Finally, I had a T480 at work that I had a love and hate relationship with. So that left me with only one odd model year that never appeared interesting to me. Now, we're not talking about an X240, T440 or W540. We're not even talking about the X240S, the rare variant from Japan, or the T440S. We're talking about the T440P, which in my words, was a spin-off, similar to how my T15G was different from the T15 and T15P of its time. I seem to have a thing with these limited spin-offs, I think. This machine has a lot too many unique features that make it different than the other counterparts and are difficult to ignore. The service panel is easily accessible behind only two screws. The CPU can be upgraded with a 4th gen Intel Core i7 quad core CPU. It's old enough to be upgradable and modern enough to be used in 2025 if you'd like. It was the only ThinkPad from around that time without the Lenovo PowerBridge system that I could never truly appreciate. I expected it to be heavier, but when it finally arrived in the mail, I loved it for the dimensions and weight. I found it to be okay for something to be traveled with, and time will tell. This one also reminded me of the rectangular charging connector that I haven't been using much lately. The hinges are grayed out with a darker shade of gray and the speakers are hidden below the unit, right below the trackpad. The clunk pad wasn't all that bad, but I decided to replace it with a better one anyway, and the 1600 by 900 screen was usable as well. As far as it goes for the state of the machine, I'd say it was okay. The battery arrived dead, but seemed to charge to 73% of the original capacity, which was better than my expectations. This is Nobara Linux from a live USB, by the way. The keyboard felt inconsistent in terms of how different each key felt and it was a non-backlit keyboard. The palm rest was broken in one corner, but at least the damage was limited to a single replaceable part. There were missing screws, so the service panel was even easier to open than it was intended to be. Finally, the machine was dirty as expected. Now, overall, I'd call this a good find, and I knew I could use this as a platform and take it beyond its original glory, which is exactly what I'll talk about next. I wanted to start with getting this thing ready for fixes and upgrades, and I started with cleaning it inside out, at least as deep as I needed to go before I replaced the parts. Many of these parts would get replaced anyway, and this won't be the only cleaning session, but at least I'd be comfortable working with the machine. The thermal repaste reminded me of the HP ProBook 4540S and the absence of the two screws made it pretty similar. Wait, is that an Nvidia GPU? I guess it doesn't matter. I won't be using proprietary drivers on this one anyway. Thankfully, I had a bunch of spare screws and these two longer ones seemed to fit perfectly. With this, the machine was back to stock and ready for the next steps. 
Now before we proceed, let me list down the spare parts I ordered for this machine. A replacement palm rest with a fingerprint reader, which also came with a pretty worn out trackpad, leaving me with two clunk pads. A T450 trackpad, which also came with its own palm rest and a few other things. A backlit keyboard, as in the absence of the tink light, there needs to be at least some illumination. A storage caddy that's different than the ones I worked with before. A 2.5 inch SATA 512GB SSD as I have some plans for this machine. A pair of 8GB DDR3 SODIMM RAM modules to bump up the memory to the max. A rectangular pin power adapter that I wanted, but I received the wrong one. Let us assume for this video that I did receive the correct one, while I used the one I had lying around, as it is so hard to align the arrival of so many parts from so many different sellers and for everything to be working and to be a perfect fit. I'll order another one soon and place this back with the thing's center. A small aftermarket battery that would reduce the dimensions and weight and given that the stock one is running at only 73% capacity, the difference in runtime shouldn't be that significant mathematically. A full HD IPS screen as that would make the 14 inch screen way more usable. At this point, the total value of the machine, including the spare parts, was around 5 times of what I paid for it initially, even after trying to save money with pre-owned parts and an aftermarket battery. There were too many things to do, and the T440P was unfamiliar, so I tried to perform multiple things at once in the order that I found convenient. I started with replacing the palm rest, for which I needed to extract it from its combined package. This thing also contained much of the frame from the other machine and as we can see, even the serial number is here. I had to be careful with the fingerprint sensor cable which I decided to steal as well. I tried to use it on my machine. Then I had to remove the trackpad as well which after removing 4 screws came right off, leaving only what I was interested in. I only left this mysterious thing in the old frame which I'll learn about someday soon. I realized that while I was doing that, I could also take care of the keyboard and trackpad for which I had to extract the trackpad from this package. For the trackpad, I learned that there were two kinds and I ended up ordering the Alps version, cancelling the order and reordering the Synaptics one that came along with several other elements including the palm rest and more. The good thing with this extraction was that I had already done a similar procedure for the other palm rest so I knew exactly how to take this thing off. Removing the palm rest from the original machine wasn't easy and I may have broken a lot of tabs that day including a piece of this pry tool but at least the palm rest was finally out. I also realized that as my machine had a smart card reader equipped and this other one did not, I had to swap this trim piece attached by two screws so that I'd have this feature with the new palm rest as well. I also needed one last thing which was a connector cable for the new trackpad as the cables between the T440P and the T450 are different. So with that, I had everything I needed in the new assembly. The palm rest with a fingerprint reader and a smart card slot and the T450 trackpad. All that was left was to put things together. For the fingerprint sensor, I learned that the cable needs to be routed all the way to the bottom and plugged in here. This took me the longest, but at least it took care of most of the difficult part. The storage caddy and SATA SSD were pretty straightforward. Next I took care of the pair of 8GB RAM modules. I ran some quick tests to check if everything was working till this point. I also experienced the difference between the backlit and the non-backlit keyboard in terms of the surface finish just as I had been reading on reddit. Once I was sure everything was working, I proceeded to upgrade the screen to finish it up. And that wasn't all that hard, with only 4 screws involved. At this point, this wasn't even the same machine that I had bought from eBay. After a few tests, I reinstalled the screen bezel. I switched out the battery with the smaller one so the machine lost some weight and was easier to move around and flip over. The final step was to install Void Linux and configure it like the rest of my ThinkPads. Now this wasn't the limit for the machine. 
I could at least upgrade the dual core Intel Core i5 processor to a quad core Intel Core i7. I've been exploring the options and reading reviews from people on which exact CPU to get. If you'd get the best CPU out there, the machine fails to cool it down. And you might end up having to upgrade the heatsink as well and getting a 135 watt power adapter to feed the power to the CPU. Most people settle with the quad core models that provide a balance between performance, power draw, and heat as the three go hand in hand. I'll probably hold off on that for now, but when I do decide to go that route, I'm glad I installed a trackpad that doesn't mention Intel Core i5 anymore. So that wouldn't be a mismatch either. For Wi-Fi and Bluetooth modules, I didn't come across any modified BIOS like Middleton's BIOS or Ivy Rain, and the only way I've seen people do it is by using a device to flash it by themselves. I'd probably hold off here as well for the time being. There are also other things like replacing the DVD drive with another SATA drive caddy, but I'd rather keep the optical drive for now. I'll consider that in the future if I keep this machine long enough. By the way, I'm sure you've heard of the ship up thesis paradox, and especially with so many parts having been swapped, that could be a thing here. However, at least the location where the serial number is printed still stays with the machine, unlike what happened to the Dell XPS M1210. Also, I may need to find new homes for the spare parts as well, which includes two clunk pads, a broken T440p palm rest, a few elements from a T450, a keyboard, and an HD plus screen. For comparisons with other ThinkPads, the closest that I have with me is this T430, which is a little bulkier, has a few extra benefits like the express card slot, a Wi-Fi kill switch, but some of the upgrades like the full HD screen are not even possible on the T430. I also learned about a feature that isn't talked about as much, which is using an M.2 SATA drive in the wireless WAN slot and booting it into another operating system. This also taught me that not every M.2 drive is an NVMe drive, and there are some rare models like this one that are SATA within that familiar M.2 2242 form factor. I picked up a 64GB one for myself for experimentation, and this one needed another spare screw to be secured in place. And it does boot from that drive, which is awesome. By the way, this is my second Nobara Linux installation, and it's perfect. So that was a lot of fun giving this T440p not only a new life, but also superpowers with a better keyboard, a better trackpad with a fingerprint sensor now, a way better screen, and hopefully that's only a start. I've been using this machine almost exclusively in the recent weeks, and I imagine this is very similar to what using a T480 with Linux would be like, except that this machine is considerably older, thicker, and weaker. I do not care what my wife would say about this one, but I absolutely love it as every impractical thing about this machine reminds me of its big brother, the W530, except that this one is slightly more practical in every possible way. About the CPU and the wireless upgrades, we'll see if the future permits. Till then, this is going to be my travel companion, while my X1 Nano takes some time off and chills with the rest of the friends.